This is the brand podcast design webinar where I've titled this five secrets for creating loyal brand podcast. I think there's more than five secrets in here, which is always good because you always want to give more than, than you expect. And that's the whole point of this is to get an idea of how Brown brand podcasting works, the nuance of how to create this very successfully and help you get the first leg up on creating your own specifically for your own brand. And I want this to help you also redefine a conversation with your industry. And this is the idea behind brand podcasting is you're not trying to sell a 45 minute commercial. You're trying to have a higher level conversation with your, with your customer so that they become loyal fans of your brand, no matter where they are. And that's, that's the kind of the idea. So keep that in mind as we're going through this and uh, let's, hopefully I will, uh, I will nail that on the head. All right. I want to begin with a little story. I want to tell you about a brand called the Happy Dog Food Company. And they recently had a national sales conference in Washington, D.C. And it's hard to imagine with all the craziness going on. But their entire North American sales force was gathered together. And their keynote speaker, the company's marketing director, comes up. And he started off by giving this kickoff worthy of a Las Vegas stage performance. And he's up there giving that old pattern of call and response. And he's really working up the excitement of the sales team. And he's saying, who makes the greatest dog food in North America? And they're like, we do. And who makes the greatest campaigns? We do. Who's got the best packaging? We do. Who's got the biggest distribution? We do. And then he stops and he stares at the audience and he says, so then why are we not selling more of our product? And there's like silence. You hear a pin drop. And then one bold voice out of the crowd yells, because dogs hate it. And this is, I, I imagine laughter in the background if this was given live, but there's a point here. And obviously this is a joke. So why do I tell you this? It's because I want to illustrate a point. Too many businesses spend too much time talking about their widget or service and far too little time understanding what their customer really wants to hear. And I want to really introduce you to the idea of brand podcasting and Doing that by defining it what Fast Company in 2018 defined it as a ad that people actually want to listen to. But I think it's that's almost too simple. I don't think it's really ads at all. I think they are non-ads. And it's a higher level conversation. I'm going to say this more. Oh, this is going to be my buzzword for this entire presentation. But the higher level conversation you're having with your customer. Great brands find a way to have a conversation with their customer. Rather than talking at their customer, they're talking to their customer about their customer's problems. So the higher level conversation you get to define what your industry is actually talking about. And unfortunately, most brands, most brand podcasts and specifically miss this point. Nobody wants to hear another podcast about how fantastic their product is or their service because people don't care. They tune that stuff out. They see already too many ads and commercials on TV, even in the movie theater. Now it's the first 20, 40 minutes is all commercials. They don't want to hear another commercial. The first thing they see when they see a commercial is they go right to their phones. They're not even watching the TV. So to build a podcast that's a 45 minute commercial doesn't work and they don't care. But what they do care about is a brand podcast that has deep under niche understanding. And this is something very simple. And that is you are solving a customer's problem without pushing a sale. And I know that seems counterintuitive. I mean, you want to push the sale. You need to push the sale. It's the whole point of business is to push the sale. But the difference between advertisement and commercial and a broad pen and a brand podcast is that you don't, it's subtle. You get people to love what you do and why you do it. So how do you do this? Well, howdy. My name is Kyle Bondo. I'm the chief creative at GagglePod, and I'm a writer, producer, and podcast designer. And right now we run uh, with my co-host or my, my co-founder and I, Tim Bryan, we run GagglePod. It's a company for podcast design. We do everything before the microphone. Some of our recent shows, PodRect, we help you survive your podcast, Not Easily Squished. We talk about podcast design elements and a, and a couple other shows that we do. This is, this is really kind of the concept that we live every day is the design pieces before people actually get on the microphone. And just like I put in the link in the chat, if you want my slides, you go to gagglepod.com slash brand 2020. There's there plus a whole bunch of other stuff. So I come from a, of a design background. My uh, co-founder is an artist and a published poet. So we have a whole lot of things going on that live in the design world. So let's get into the actual nuts and bolts of 
brand podcasting. And the first thing you want to think about in brand podcasting is there are things that are good about it. There are things that are bad about it. And there are things that are ugly about it. Let's talk about the good parts first. First, there's a lot of opportunity. It is far from being a saturated, a saturated space. Brand podcasts, a lot of them are commercials, just like I said, the 45-minute commercial that people don't listen to. So there's plenty of opportunity to be in this space and have this conversation because a lot of the other businesses are not doing this. They're not in the podcasting space giving these type of, of podcast and these designs. Plus the reach. A good show can have huge reach because someone has to want to listen to a podcast. You can have a video show up in a, in a Facebook feed, or you can have a commercial up on TV, the passiveness of all that. But a podcast, you actually have to download to your device or on, watch it on your desktop. But most, li most likely, it's going to be on a device. You have to want to do that. That's your customer actually seeking out what you're saying. That's a very different kind of reach than other, than other forms of commercial or advertising. There's also a stigma, this non-ad advertising, there's no magic formula to the success. So you could do really much anything. There is no rules per se for creating a good brand podcast. There's no one way or one size fits all. Additionally, in podcasting, there's no length. Your brand podcast can be two minutes long. It could be an hour long. It could be four hours long. As long as it's good, the the key point that uh, I'd like to point out from a, another podcaster named uh, Dave Jackson says, not too long, only too boring. So length can be any size. There is no ideal length. And if anyone tells you there's an ideal length, they're trying to sell you a course. That is definitely not a true thing in podcasting. Be any size. Finally, cost. It's a fraction of what a commercial spot costs. I think the, what they say for a 30 second spot in the Super Bowl was like $5 million, some crazy stuff last year. The cost of podcasting is a fraction of that and has better engagement with your audience than a commercial does. Because again, what do we all do when a commercial comes on TV? We look at our phones. But let's back this up with some data. And the data is is coming from BBC Global News. News, And of course, we're thinking, okay, well, that's that, and that's overseas, right? But they did this on four continents. And BBC has a large radio presence and has a very strong podcasting presence. So they're someone to actually listen to. And they talked about this 94% of customers listen while they're doing other things. Unlike a video you have to watch or blog you have to read or a commercial you have to watch, you can listen to a podcast while you're doing the dishes, doing the laundry, mowing the lawn, out for a walk. These are the kind of things that you can do that you can't do with any other type of advertising. Additionally, it has better engagement than TV. It has higher brand awareness because people are actually asking to listen to it. It is higher brand consideration. You are having a higher level conversation with your audience by understanding their problem, not pushing them a product. Plus, it builds this fan base. This is something that you don't hear about. I mean, you might think about there are funny commercials that people like, but does anyone really have a fan of commercials in themselves? Not really, but podcasting is different. Whereas if you're talking about this type of problem, you build fans. And of course, the most important part is a higher brand purchase intent. If you can deliver something that people want to listen to, they're more likely to buy your product than someone else's. So those are some interesting statistics to keep in mind. Now, what's the dark side of brand podcasting. Well, first, it's difficult to get it right. Most people who are doing brand podcast development do the 45-minute commercial. It's the infomercial. It's the the kind of long-term uh uh what do you call it? What's the guy who does the uh the the wet seal guy? The, there's the, the the infomercial where you'll buy my the best pillow ever or the best product ever. And this is the 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 thing that turns people off. And you won't get listeners if you're constantly just trying to push, 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 push. I, also, it's compelling conversation that provides value has to be worth the person's time because they're not going to come back. The whole point of a podcast is you get constant listenership throughout the entire show. You want them to listen from beginning to end. You want them to download the next episode. Well, if you have a show that no one likes, it won't be worth their time. So you, if you don't make it worth their time, they won't listen. You can't do direct sales inside a podcast like we talked about before. If you start pushing or start making a commercial, people either skip that commercial or they'll turn you off completely. A big deal in brand podcasting is creativity. And creativity matters in that the story has to be compelling enough. And we'll get into some examples here in a minute to talk about how you can think about creativity in this place. But if it's not a compelling story, if it's just 
you know, we built this thing to solve this problem and, you know, and now buy my thing. That's not going to work. And finally, marathon. And I say marathon is, is think about the 26 miles of running. Podcasting is the same thing. It's not an overnight success. It allow, you need to allow time for discovery. It's slow burn. And this is the long game of brand podcasting that you have to worry about. Now, the ugly. These are the things kind of in the middle. Is there's a fine line between infomercial and infotainment. And you have to think about who decides what that fine line is. And the answer is your audience. Your audience will decide whether or not they think that's a commercial or not a commercial. You can only make 50% of the people happy 50% of the time. This is the same thing in podcasting. Some people will think that's the greatest thing you've ever done. Other people will say, oh, that, that's another commercial. And that's okay because it's not for everybody. You're trying to find that fan base. Again, it takes that creativity mind. You might require to even hire companies like marketing companies to, to think of outside of your business and try to find the conversation that maybe you don't even know you're, you're having with your audience. This is the, like, if you are selling beauty products, you probably don't want to start a podcast about mountain biking unless you're trying to market to maybe women mountain bikers. So you're trying to think about, you need to bring in other voices to help you with that creativity. There's a positioning challenge in this too is that it needs to be aligned with the problem you're trying to solve. So if you, again, if you're beauty products and you make a podcast about mountain biking, your positioning is kind of off. So you need to align yourself with exactly the market you're in. So you're talking to people in your market that would be interested in what you're selling. It has very different metrics than other places where you have, uh, you have, thousands of listens or thousands of groups of people, different shares of the market. Podcasting is very different because it's really kind of a one for one. You can get a download. doesn't mean someone listened. When you get engagement, you get listening. So the metrics start to change and there's more like listeners are not views or likes. And that's the difference in podcasting is they can download the podcast itself, but you're looking for subscriptions, repeat users, and actually people to engage with your content. And I'll give an example of that here in a minute too. And finally, there's no magic formula. I want to stress this as much as anything is what works for one podcast doesn't work for another. Let's talk about the two types of people that really kind of work inside the podcasting world, the literalist and the innovator and the literalist. I like to use uh, Lex Friedman's. He's the uh, CRO from mid roll, which is a, a, a big media company, big in the podcasting space. And he says, quote, no one wants to listen to a 10 episode podcast about how great ZipRecruiter is in finding the right applicant. Now, that is the 45 minute commercial. That is exactly what the kind of brand podcast you don't want to have. Now, he flips this and says the way you innovate with brand podcasting is you say, quote, but if we can create a show on what it means to be successful, that's going to appeal exactly the kind of people the ZipRecruiter wants to reach. You're not telling people how to find people. You're talking about the people that are successful. And by the way, ZipRecruiter just happens to make a product that does that. That's the kind of way to think about this. So as we go forward, think about this. Are you a literalist or are you an innovator? And then maybe you need to start rethinking or retweaking the way you think about the way your brand podcast works. So how do we do this? What are the principles of brand podcast? And this is my big, my favorite thing because I don't like rules. Rules can be, you know, you can break rules. Rules make it too rigid. Principles, however, if you can stick to these principles, will help you be successful. And that's the whole point. So, what are the principles of brand podcasting? Well, first, don't spam. Do not advertise like a crazy person. Your mission and goal is to solve the problem and solve your, and specifically solve your customer's problem. You want your brand podcast has one job is you want it to promote your business, right? Wrong. A brand podcast, it does the opposite. It solves the customer's problem. It's the what's in it for me. You are trying to give your customer something that maybe they didn't know they wanted or almost something for free in a sense is you're telling them how problems can be solved. And you, you can be kind of a counterintuitive message, but you really are trying to, to say this, this positivity, you want to add positivity to the marketplace. So customers process counterintuitive messages positively. And they believe what you say. And then if they do believe that, they will connect it to the brand, your brand, to that feeling of believing what you say. Now, what does that really kind of look like? Let's talk about Rework. Now, Rework is a podcast by the folks that make Basecamp. And if you're familiar with Basecamp, if you're familiar with product, productivity tools, 
Basecamp is a software as a service application. They created a podcast, not about them building a piece of software, not about how their software product does great things or helps you solve your business problems or maybe give you a four day work week, any of those kind of things. Instead, what they did is they started a podcast that does 10 minute interviews of people are telling stories. They promote their guests. They're telling stories about people who are innovating in the workplace. Their target is business innovation, not the actual application that Basecamp happens to help in business in business innovation. This is the the higher level conversation you're having with your customer. And if you because Basecamp being a productivity tool, if you believe they have their thumb on the pulse of the business innovation, then you also believe that maybe their software is good enough for your company too. And that's kind of the higher level idea is you're having this, uh, we believe in business innovation. We're promoting people who do business innovation. By the way, we happen to sell a product if you're interested. Next is stories win. Stories win when you actually do deep niche understanding and start mapping to your position. Because in deep niche understanding, you're taking a complex topic, you're grabbing a slice of it, you're mapping it to your positioning, and you're redefining it. Connecting stories is will work very well for this. And in connecting stories, you have to think about Slack. Now, Slack, again, another productivity tool. This is a, a tool that helps do in inner office chat is really a good way to define what Slack is. A lot of development companies use this, but a lot of uh, it's starting to branch out a lot more. But their podcast is not about, again, their application. They talk about work life experience. They want to know how people are balancing their work demands, but also have time for relationships, family, time to be creative. This is their quirky stories about how people get along in the workplace, but also get along in their family life and be able to balance the two. They've created a podcast that talks about these stories or finding these stories and interviewing these people. They're telling you some interesting things that are actually fun to listen to. This happened to sell a productivity tool on the side that helps people do remote teleworking or do inner office chat to help people communicate better. That is kind of, that is the, that's not kind of the idea. That is the idea. Third is collaborate. The third principle is you have to work with creatives and use great storytellers to do this. This is the idea that you want to know that the person telling your story is someone interest is interesting for the audience. You may be looking too closely at your brand. You need to take a step back and understand how people have built brand into their lives. Is how do your customers actually interact with your brand? Is it just because they buy it off the shelf because they need it every day? Or is there something else more you know more personal to them about what they're doing when they do when they purchase your product? So when you you bring in people that have different experiences than you onto your team. You start to get that outside perspective that maybe you're not seeing that your customer's perspective of how that brand makes them feel is something you need to definitely focus on. Someone who does this well is lip stories. Lip stories is from the Sephora collection. Now lip stories develop content people can relate to because they talk about they talk to women leaders, entrepreneurs and innovators in business. And then you think about, well, Sephora collection isn't really that. It's all, it's all beauty supplies, those beauty, beauty products. Well, they have this conversation about empowerment. And by the way, confidence building beauty products is their, is their niche. But what they're talking about inside their podcast is business is women who are business leaders, entrepreneurs, and innovators who have taken control of their, their situation. They have gone off and gotten jobs that they didn't think they could get. They've been in positions that they have, uh, they had, maybe they had fears or worries and they talk through all this, but they also connect this to notions of beauty, confidence, and how they've changed their lives through, and through this kind of this confidence building examples and stories. And why does this work? Because the next time you need beauty supplies and you've heard some of these conversations from some of these women that maybe you admire, or that maybe you, you were, didn't know about their story or their background, and you associate this these stories with something that you want to feel, and it just so happens that that feeling then is connected to a product that you purchase. And that is the, again, the idea. Now, the fourth principle is you don't want to go constantly, constantly, constantly into people's faces. You need to take a breath. So you run seasons, you go and you don't overdo it every, every year you do big chunks. And the reason is, is because you want to be noteworthy. You need your brand to have some space. 
you also need the time to repurpose your content. You're going to create a bunch of episodes that are connected to the higher level brand conversation. And then you're going to use those episodes to create blog content. You're going to take quotes out of that to use for social media posts. You're going to bring a good guest back, someone that really resonated with your audience, back for additional conversations. And you're going to think about bonus content. You're going to explore maybe seasonal episodes for the holidays, or you're going to to build in maybe a, a a class or a theme that you can just drop into a your stream or your they actually in podcast we call it a feed and come back every quarter and every year. This is a a good way to be able to do a creative sprint, take a breath, do a creative sprint, and take a breath because you want to be noteworthy. You want to have you want you stops becoming news if it's not if it's around all the time. And that's, that's kind of the goal in this is give it some breath and then come back with a new season and promote it that way. Now, another way to think about this is, is do a spring season and a fall season, just like you would in your, your, your sales cycles. A good example is two minutes of Zen done by Zendium toothpaste of all places. Now this is a two minute podcast where they're talking about meditation, resets, mantras, stretches. There's no ads. There's no spots. There's no nothing. It's just two minutes of Nicole talking, meditations, resets, and, some, some, and I think there's might be some yoga stretches that uh, that are very specific in this, depending on which episode you're listening to. It just happens to be the time it takes you to brush your teeth. Well, how novel is that? Is a toothpaste company doing a Zen, which just happens to be in their name, so they're they're definitely positioning themselves very well, and talk about their brand in a way that you would use to brush your teeth with. Listen to our podcast while you're brushing your teeth. That's kind of a cool concept. Again, this is another one of those, those connect positioning yourself correctly, but doesn't have to be an advertisement. It's in fact, there's, they don't even, I think they mentioned the toothpaste once at the end, like brought to you by Zendium. And that's a, that's a really interesting way of looking at this. The last principle is engagement is you want to make this fun is you want to give the customer something they actually want. And this is done with special giveaways, VIP content, and discounts. If you go to if you go to a landing page or extend, you know, maybe exchange an email for something, you can actually know that a listener has listened to the podcast. And you can do things like exclusives at the end of the episode. That way you know not only has a customer listened through the entire episode itself, but then they get an exclusive that no one else gets, that only the listener gets. And this is a way you can actually capture leads because you can send them either to a special page where you can capture an email. So you know it's not like a, it's not passive. It's not, did I watch the ad or not? No, someone actually had to listen to your podcast, go to that link, and put in that email address to get the special engagement. So you, have, you know there's a customer out there. You know, it's, it's a warm customer, too, because they had to listen to the whole show to get that. How does this work well? well? Hackable is an interesting podcast to talk about for this example. It's done by McAfee, which is a virus software. And uh, you might notice that there's, there's some software stuff in here. I'm an IT guy, so, so bear with me. But McAfee does an really interesting thing is rather than spend their entire time talking about their podcast as a virus software or the, the elements of virus software, instead... What they do is they expose places that people hack. They go probably talk about everything from porch pirates to email hackers to social engineering. They're going to talk about how hackers actually gain your info. And then it's almost like a catch a thief concept. They're going to explore how hackers get you. Now, that is a very compelling story to tell because people want to know how to be safe online. They tell these stories and they bring in real security people. In fact, the way they've set up their podcast is the first 10 minutes is the real security person talking about how hackers do that. And then they try to recreate it to find out how easy it is to actually steal people's personal information. And if you want to be terrified about being online, go listen to this podcast because it will tell you. It will tell you that your personal information online is very exposed if you don't happen to use virus software. Well, just so happens that McAfee happens to sell that. And that's the point. And at the end of their show, what they do is a lot of times they'll give something away. Like the first thousand people that go to this website and sign up win a free VPN. If you're not familiar with what a VPN is, is basically it's a secure server used to anonymously surf the internet with. Well, you get one for free for a year if you sign up at the end of their one of their shows when they give away this this exclusive. 
but you have to be a listener to get that. Well, it just so happens that a thousand people get a free VPN sold out in two minutes. So you know exactly how many people are listening and you have engagement right away. That is a pretty compelling story for a brand podcast. Now, there are a few gotchas that I want to drop in here towards the end. And this is the the lessons learned of things that you have to really consider while you're designing this and putting this together. The first one is that your audience isn't listening yet. This is, you have to invest in the long haul. Most shows build slowly to get the word out. So this is a, a very slow burn. It takes time. It's not something that's going to happen right away. And this is different than maybe an ad or a pot or a, uh, a commercial or a TV ad where you can throw something out there and maybe you get an immediate spike. Podcasting is something that people discover slowly over time, word of mouth. It starts to spread. It takes time. So just remember that this is something that is not going to happen overnight. Second thing, you need to find a host of the most. So if your voice of your brand is Bob from accounting, that's not going to get it done. You need someone, you need like Sarah, Sarah with a five cups of coffee to make it exciting. So think about who is actually per, you know, the voice of your brand when you're talking to your customer. And is it the right voice for the positioning within your market? Are you a serious company? Maybe you need a serious host. Are you a fun, exciting company? Maybe you need a fun, exciting host. But hosts matter because it's going to be the person that's actually going to be the voice of your brand. There's an audio concept there that you have to really consider. Next is podcasting is not just another channel. It's not TV. It's not YouTube. It's not Facebook. It's a long-term narrative. And there's like a year's worth of content that has to be built up through there. So you can tell stories in pieces where in a 30 second spot, you have to cram everything in really quick. You can actually tell long stories. You can give more details than normally you would give in any kind of advertisement. You're going to own that conversation over time, but you're going to have to build to that conversation. So don't just treat it like a commercial where, oh, we put a spot out, we put a podcast out, and three months, nothing happened. No, that's not the way this works. It's a constant building of that. So think about maybe the story gets built over time. The fourth one is podcast isn't quick or cheap. Now, if you just want a podcast tomorrow, you can buy a microphone, you can get yourself some hosting space, you can get some recording software, and within 100 bucks, you're up and running, no problem. Maybe even free. There are software out there that's free, so the microphone becomes the only thing you're really spending on in the host. But if you're really going to invest in this, maybe you need to hire a host, actually someone with a good voice. Maybe you have to, to really look at some of the assets that you need to put in this. Maybe you need a writer for the show. Maybe you need a producer for the show. So it could actually get some cost in there and it's long term, which means it needs to have the life and energy of its own. So you can't just spend three months or six months. This is something maybe you need to commit a year to, or maybe even two years to, to think about making sure that the host is gets his groove or her groove until the, the audience arrives. And it will over time, the audience will start to build over time as people start to share and experience and word of mouth starts to spread out. The fifth thing, of course, is think quality, not quantity. This is not about the number of episodes you can pump out super fast. It's about episodes that matter. It's not episodes, really. It's value that you're really kind of thinking about here is if you can solve a problem in a creative way using stories mostly, then you can really compel people to want to listen. And it doesn't matter if there's only five episodes. If there's five episodes of quality, people will listen to all five episodes, and then they'll listen to the replay of those episodes or additional hosts that show up or additional guests that show up. They'll listen to more if it's good quality. So there doesn't have to be a lot of them as long as they're just good. So this is kind of, this is the long game. This is the long way across brand podcasting. And I want to, of course, the theme of this, all the dogs, these are my two dogs, Tank and Murphy, my trail dogs. But if you follow these principles... You can build a long-term success that it's something that your customer will want to listen to. And when creating this thing about your customer's problem, when you're looking at your customer's problem and creating stories around that to help them understand what it is that they're trying to solve, and then, oh, by the way, you just happen to make a product that solves that or have a service that solves that, then you can create the compelling way to talk about a solution to their problem and force your show to have a higher level conversation where you're talking about the big picture and how they build these, these, these problems or have these problems in their life that you can then make them fans of your product or your service when it comes to actually creating a podcast around your brand. 
And again, my name is Kyle Bondo. If you have any questions or are interested more in learning more about brand podcasting, you can find me at gagglepod at gmail.com. And like I put at the very beginning and here towards the end, if you want these slides, you can go to gagglepod.com slash brand 2020, and that will give you everything you uh, you need about about that. That is the the webinar. Let's see, we got about I think we got about five or ten minutes left. And let me see some of the questions here. How would you measure the this outside of saying during a post roll spot or take a test drive? The uh, the way that I've heard I've seen this done when it comes to doing exclusives or measuring engagement through the podcast is using things like Chartable or or even MailChimp or special URLs. So the URL that you put inside your podcast is specific to that particular campaign. The idea then is if they hear that campaign, the campaign window is only open for a certain period of time or a certain amount of people that can get to it. The initial response is going to be people that heard the podcast. Now, is there going to be spammer people or people are going to like share that out outside of that? Maybe that might happen later on, maybe in a couple of weeks or two of that podcast and they find out, oh, hey, heck, you know, McAfee's giving away a free VPN. Then they'll, you might get a few of those. But ideally what will happen is inside the podcast itself, you'll know exactly which episode and you'll be able to track when the time of day someone actually clicked on that link. And there's, a, I mean, there's a ton of them. There is, a, you know, Constant Contact, Mailchimp, and a Chartable, the big three right now that you could use to do these kind of things. I think uh, uh, AppZumo, uh, Sumo, and uh, there's a couple other ones where you can do specific campaign-driven connections and connect the campaign to a to a link that you give out. And just like I did, the Brand 2020 link for my for my slides and everything doesn't go to a page called brand 2020 it goes to a different page. So if you actually use the promo code gagglepod.com slash brand 2020, I'll know how many people click that link went to that link and moved over to the actual page. And I change this around for each one of my webinars and that's how you can track it. You can track that engagement. Another way to do it is to drop the email link in there so that when they show up to that page, they have to enter their email link. That, that kind of gives you a different engagement where you can build a list off of those kind of engagements. So it's like, hey, I'm giving away a free book. The free book at the end of this episode, or we're going to talk about the, so we're doing beauty supplies for mountain bikers, for women mountain bikers. And at the end of that, we're going to give away a free book about uh, how to apply you know, trail makeup. I'm just kind of making this up on my head. And they go to that link at the end of the page, and it becomes – there's a – landing page with an email address uh, box in there saying for that for this link you have to enter your email address and so you do and you get the free book but now you have their email address now i know that someone listened to the podcast listened to the end of the podcast and then gave me their email address so if i send them a, a email saying thanks for signing up i'm so glad you listened to the podcast here's some bonus content that you didn't that no only exclusively for people that didn't uh, who, who 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 signed up get to have wow I tell you the engagement that happens with that. People are like, oh my gosh, you believe this company? Not only did they, I listen to their podcast, it was really cool stories, but I signed up, I got a free book, and they sent me a bonus uh, bonus content, like a coupon or something for, uh, for, for wherever I need to go buy stuff. That's how you can really use brand podcasting to improve sales. An another question that was asked was, do I have to use ads in my podcast? And the answer is no. I mean, we look at the Zendium example is you don't have to use ads. You can... You can just leave it out there is, you know, hey, we just happen to sell, we just happen to sell toothpaste. But the next time I, I if I listen to that podcast and I'm, you know, I'm using, doing my, my mantras and I'm doing my flexing and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm brushing my teeth while I'm doing that. Chances are when I'm in the supermarket and I'm looking at the toothpaste brands and there are 10,000 of them, I'm going to see Zendium and be like, you know what? That's the podcast I listen to brush my teeth with. Maybe I should try their brand. Another question I had was, uh, do I need to have a product or service before I start podcasting? Again, the answer is no. You can start the conversation about the industry now before you have the actual product or service. There are some companies that do what's called a minimal viable product. And a minimal viable product is the, the smallest amount of product they can get to the market right away. Well, sometimes that requires validation. A podcast is the cheapest and easiest way to get market validation. Because if you can build an audience around the higher level conversation about the industry that you're trying to build a product for or service for, 
and you actually build that audience, you then have pre primed the market for people you can you can talk to about surveys, who can do beta testing, who can uh, who can give you feedback on on what you've done. That's that's invaluable information. So you're almost finding customers before it's time to actually make the sale. That is a, a big deal. Another question was, what is the average time before I see results? And this could be something as far in as a year. Me might see results right away. There are some podcasters that see results right away, but it's possible that you will not see results until maybe a year in or 18 months. It could be even two years. So this is a long investment, but trust me, the amount of experience I've had in podcasting and seeing these podcasts take shape after two years, you will have an audience. It will build and you'll be able to refine along the way. It's not, it's not a set in stone formula. You can change it. You can try new things. You can experiment with new things. You start new shows. So as you build this library over time, what happens is, is you build 10 episodes and maybe you have uh, a very little downloads for 10 episodes, but then someone finds your, one of those episodes and goes, oh my gosh, I love this. And then downloads the other nine. And now you have now your your numbers start to improve, and then shares that with a friend, and then that friend downloads the you, know, you have twelve at this point, and then downloads all twelve. Your download numbers start to increase as these podcasts start to get shared around, and people start to talk about it. That is how the growth naturally takes place. And industry magazines and industry places, if you repurpose your content, will start to find you as well, and they'll start writing articles about you. They'll start writing a list like the top 10 brand podcasts and companies like Fast Company and Inc. and those kind of things will start putting you in their lists as you grow. So there's the potential for press releases, repurposed blog content, social media content, especially big guests. If you're going to do a guest type show, bringing on guests that are that are really kind of toast makers inside that industry that you're that you're focused on. If you can have a guest on and talk about the you know the top three things that people most struggle about the thing that you're working on, people will tune in to hear that person talk. That becomes yet another opportunity to to do what you need to do to connect your brand with an audience, and that's really the whole goal. So that is, I think that's uh, that's almost our time. Do I see how much time we got left here? I think. Hey, Kyle, you actually uh, have unlimited time now. I just got a notification from Zoom that uh, you got a lot of time. So nice. keep on talking, boss. Nice. Unlimited time. No, everyone loves it. There you go. See, Zoom just gave me an exclusive promo, which just made me a, a bigger fan of Zoom than I was before. Uh, it's only they had a podcast. I don't. It's kind of crazy. They don't have a podcast. So that is, if you have any questions, go ahead and just, you can unmute your mic or, uh, or, or drop it in the chat. Kyle, um, question I have is, I know you were talking about the seasonality of some of these episodes that are doing the brand podcast approach. Are you saying that this is in addition to just the regular podcast episodes that they're doing, or were you just giving examples of some that were just seasonal or whatever in terms of that particular example you were proposing or talking about? Sure. So the, uh, the the concept is, is is to give your show some space, Uh, seasonal work, tends to work better with marketing campaigns because a marketing campaign has a, a lifespan. You're you're working on the, you know, the three month campaign or the six month campaign, and then there's the podcast kind of follows along that campaign until its end. You do your your accounting and then you figure out what can be repurposed. You decide whether or not that actually worked and then you try a season two. That's one concept. But in podcasting, there are no rules. So if you want to do a show every single week or do a daily show, then there are a lot of podcast examples for this. Uh, the New York Times has a uh, has a, uh, a podcast called The Daily, which is the, their news program. The uh, their I mean, Fox News, CNN, uh, you pick a news, any kind of news network whatsoever. All of them have the ability to to do the daily show where they're constantly putting out content. You can do it that way as well. The one thing you're kind of looking for to focus on whether or not you do seasonal or not is whether or not you have the bandwidth and the capital to push it that far. If you have a host, maybe it's yourself. If you have uh, the ability to sit down at the microphone and create the content weekly, if you have the interest and the excitement to talk about what you're talking about, then why not do it weekly? You could. There's no, no one saying you can't. When it comes to so some of these brands, especially some of the bigger brands, 
the idea then becomes, well, maybe you want to do it through the cycle of the campaign. So you could do either way. And that's really, so I, the, of course the answer in podcasting is always, it depends. And in this case, it really depends on what your op tempo wants to, you want, you want your op tempo to be when it comes to your campaign. So do you want to build it in a campaign or is this just kind of a slow burn weekly build over time? Or is this a daily thing where you're constantly connecting to a daily type of, of content, almost like a news, a, you know, news snippets or updates every single day. That makes sense. I think my coffee's wearing yes, off. Yes, it does. Thanks so much. Sure thing. So I'm glad everyone got something out of this. Again, the replay will be up probably by the uh, the end of the week. I will uh, I will put that up on on that link, and I will send that link out via the email of everyone who signed up, so they get a copy of that. And that goes, of course, to the gagglepod.com page that has the other things on there too. We have uh, our past presentations. Uh, links to design uh, templates to to help you create your own podcast and do some podcast design thinking. Uh, there's a couple different uh, specials on there. Uh, I've been writing a book for three years that uh, that I have a pre a pre sale page for. If you want to, you know, 2021 maybe the design book will be out. Uh, I, I, it's a work of love. And uh, there are our podcasts on there that uh, GagglePod also uh, produces. Some of the shows that we uh, we run definitely be interested in that, especially if you're into podcasting. We do Podrect, which is a podcast about how to survive your podcast. We talk about some of the things, the problems that go wrong in podcasting. It's definitely worth a listen. And if you're inter- more interested into uh, to arts and some of the more uh, subjective thinking of that, uh, Tim runs a podcast called Create Art Podcast, which talks about uh, art concepts, interviews artists, talks about the muse and uh, and poetry and those kind of things. That's a good one to listen to as well. But uh, we got a whole bunch of those. Thank you so much. Yeah, get the book done. Yes, that's right. It's finished. It just needs to be edited. That's the that, oh, editing is always the Achilles tendon of book writing, but uh, it's definitely finished. In fact, I think I have like three books that are finished. So maybe there's a couple books I need to actually write. Uh, maybe I'll do PDFs. Maybe PDFs books would, would be better. I don't have to do so much. So thank you so much for joining me. Everyone, take care. Have a good week. Thanks, Kyle.